Hey everybody, uh, putting away the kayfabe here. Uh, this is kind of weird to start off with my voice and not spoiler bot like usual. Uh, just a quick little thing for people who are not in the server. And if you're in the server, don't listen to this. Skip until you hear look, skip until you hear spoiler bot. So here's the here's the thing, guys. Uh, after this episode, there's not going to be any episodes until we come back for Saber, which will be in like two weeks ish, probably. I think I don't really know. It's going to end at episode fifty. I think we're at like forty eight, but we're not going to come back until Saber ends. So after that comes back, after that finishes, we are going to go officially to two podcasts a month, just two. I was going to say bi monthly, but for some reason I just feel like that's not right. But two. Podcast you, a month. You just wanted to be an asshole about it. Yes, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't know if bi monthly was right or not. I mean, that's, <laughs> that's technically technically correct. Because I because I hear people say bi monthly f for two months. Well, I, I mean, bi weekly would be the you know actual correct answer. But would it? I thought bi weekly would be two a week. That's every other week. <laughs> huh. Well. Or, Either, yeah. You know what? Well, either way, I'm not an weeks. English major. I don't fucking know. Phil is. We should get him here. Yeah, um, fuck. <clears throat> but yes, yeah, so Phil. He was supposed to be on this episode. He's dead. That's true. You know what? That's true. <laughs> I did. We we did kill Chris. Uh, uh, fuck Chris. Chris. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. No, we can't. We can't keep talking about Chris Chan. We gotta fucking. Phil's focus. gonna get so mad that you mixed up his name with that. <laughs> Oh, uh, that'd be uh, fucking funny if like that'd be fucking funny though. If the that, that that would be that. What the fuck was this? What the fuck was this segment about again? I don't even fucking uh, remember. <clears throat> so as I was saying, <clears throat> we're gonna be doing from now on a two episode a month schedule, mainly because doing an episode a week is killing us slowly, <laughs> in more ways than one, and we don't want to make it so this is not fun anymore. It's still fun, thankfully, oh, but yeah. we don't want to have it to that point where it's not fun anymore. And trust me, after doing Curiouger and Ghost Sager, go fuck yourselves. Um, so we're basically going to do two a week for the fact that we want to give ourselves some time to not be pressured to finish it weekly, to give take time to, to watch these shows, and just so we can, you know, give ourselves a breather. Because let's be honest, this year we've kind of been going on all, on all fucking cylinders and it's kind of been crazy. Mm -hmm. uh, so just so you know that's what's going to be happening we're not any of the podcasts we're not shooting phil we're not doing yet. any of that well yeah <laughs> we're not doing any of that we're just going to be doing two episodes a month just so we can make sure that this stays fun and that this stays of quality and also everything else that we're doing in our own lives and you know, for the youtube channel as well i should mention stays of quality so that makes sense to you guys. If it doesn't, uh, transcribe this into your own language because I don't know what you're doing here. <laughs> yeah, basically. So, just know that's going to be happening. We'll still be around. We're still doing podcasts. It's just two every month, and we're probably and that probably means we're probably going to start doing longer shows. <sighs> Fuck me. Um, we're probably going to do like Cosmos. Wait, what's ones with seventy two episodes? Like Cosmos? Is it Cosmos? I Cosmos is pretty close to seventy two. Yeah. Oh fuck my life, dude! Jesus Christ, that's on the wheel, dude. I'm scared. Me too. Me um, too. So, uh, with that being said, take it away, Mister Robot. Oh no, it's Mrs. Robot. I'm sorry. You you fucking degenerate! You misgendered the robot. You're g we're gonna get canceled, okay? I don't want to be I don't want to be canceled, okay? I am. I am a proud, practicing. I can't even fucking finish that sentence. Never mind. Uh, fuck. Uh, that's too much even for me. The following Toku podcast to contain spoilers from both past and present Tokusatsu, anime, manga, movies, and other related media. If you do not wish to be spoiled, we suggest turning off the podcast now. Otherwise, please enjoy the show. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Talk About Satsu. Satsu, yeah. It's been a show about Toku. You probably never heard of that. That's Jay. You guys remember that time Lex Luthor traveled back in time to cuck Superman's dad? Which time? Uh, I th <laughs> Actually, I think there was more than one time. I don't know how to think about That's it. That's what I... <laughs> 
I was ta- I was talking about the, like the Silver Age version where it was like it was like a, a goofy joke because it's the fucking Silver Age, but uh, yeah, I think there was more than one time that happened. I guarantee you, that- everything, every joke that you're gonna mention with that specific punchline has ha- been happened more than once. I mean, look, it's not even the weirdest thing Lex Luthor's ever done. <sighs> no, 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 it's not. <laughs> so today we have come back. Finally, finally, come back to Garo, but it's not with Koga, as we will sadly understand as we go along. But first off, Jay, I have to ask you this, and I have to ask you this first before we get into the characters, which is usually not something we do. Um, so, what was this show? Because this show felt from the outset like it was not supposed to be made. I was it or was it not? I have absolutely no mm. idea. I as f- far as I'm aware, the idea was that uh, Amamiya was, you know, uh, Makai Senki and then there was uh the movie after Makai Senki has a pretty definitive ending. I'm I have the feeling that that Amamiya was like, all right, Garo's done. And then he was like, actually, wait, Garo still makes money. Um, let's just kind of have it be its own thing now. You know, every every season's kind of different. So Amamiya is just like, here's Garo, guys. <laughs> you do what you want with it. I'll come back, take a look, see what, you know, like give a yes or no. I mean, you guys just take, just take the reins, do whatever you want. <laughs> That's the only thing that makes real sense to me for what this was. So what you're saying is that one picture of uh, d- of uh, Danny Glover coming into a room with pizzas and the whole fucking kitchen's on fire? Well, no, that was uh, that's that's the reaction after the season ended, and then, and then he made <laughs> flowers of Hawkeye. <laughs> um. So, <clears throat> so basically, what I'm trying to say is that this show did not feel normal. In any sense. And what I mean by that also is that it felt very not Garo. If, well, actually, you know what? We'll get, to, we'll get to that. So first off, starting with the characters. And Jay, I want to ask you to go first because I want you. I want to know, what did you think of, by the way, this is not the Kogaverse. This is an alternate reality. What did you think of Ryuga? Well, if I could accurately describe what his personality is, <laughs> I think he's he's just fine. He's not awful. The thing kind is, of an asshole. He's kind of an asshole sometimes. See, that's that's the problem is that he he doesn't really have a consistent personality. That's that's an issue that kind of comes up a lot where. Uh, and, and a lot of the shows we've done recently with characters not having consistent know, personalities. Right? It's weird how that's weird how of a consistent tangent that's been. I know, right? That's Where weird. The show kind of flip flops between whether Ryuga is he's a, a brash, cocky jerk who kinda doesn't really he's he's like a rebel. He's he's a loose cannon. He he doesn't care about the established rules of the Makai, the knights, and the the priests, and the orders, and he's just... He doesn't really... You know, he's kind of like, uh, authority figures. Yeah, I don't care about your rules. I just want to do what I want to do. But then sometimes he's he's just <clears throat> Koga again, where he's he's a grim, dour, stick-in-the-mud ass. But he's he means well, but he's just like... He has no skills at all as, like, a person. And then sometimes he's like the stock hero where he's like, he's friends to every, you know, he befriends small children and elderly people in the park. He and juggles just, with the clown. He fucking juggles. He, there's literally a scene where he juggles with a clown and, you know, he's just friends to everybody. He just wants to help and he's nice and positive and we'll, we'll flip flop between those between episode to episode. And it's, here's the thing. You can have a character have kind of like a contrast of those personalities and, and have it work. Koga did that well, where Koga's a big, you know, gigantic, grim, dour, stick in the mud with a giant metal rod up his ass because he he's a horrible backwoods raised moron, more or less. But he's <laughs> but he's like he's still a good guy. He still means well. He just he doesn't understand people skills. So 
he's standoffish and he's a jackass most of the time because he doesn't really understand how emotions and real humans work. Sure, and you yeah. Can, you can have that contrast, and they they sometimes do that with with Ryuga, but then sometimes he's just like a completely different character the very next episode, and there's no. He, he, I was gonna say it's it's weird because at times, yeah, it's like you said. They're trying to just do Koga again, but then other times, they're trying to do like the overly passionate, hot-blooded hero, and it just doesn't work. Because, guy, I still remember what you did the last fucking episode. You're a dick. You're not. You're a complete asshole. You can't tell me the next episode. Oh, he's just a he's just a good guy. He just wants to help people, and he's just a little too hot headed. It's like, <laughs> no, you're just kind of a dick. What the fuck? You, you I don't. I, I'm gonna be honest, dude. I'm gonna be honest, and, and I and I, I wish I didn't have to say it, but I really didn't. I didn't really like him that much. He kind of rubbed me the wrong way too many times. I. <laughs> I didn't hate him in the sense that every time he was on screen, I was just miserable. Like, no, like no. Daigo or half of the ghost sagers or, <laughs> um, you remember that when they were on screen, I didn't a, Yeah, fucking, I remember the fact that I remember anything about ghost sagers and, and astounding or, uh, fucking like, what did we do? What did we do? What did we, we do before cure Uji? I don't even remember now. Uh, that was evolver, dude. Yeah. Okay. We're or anybody in evolver. Yeah. <laughs> The billiards chick. Yeah. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, uh, but it's true. Like, yeah, it's not like he was a miserable fucking waste where I just wanted to kill this guy. It's just there were too many times where he was just a little bit of an asshole. And then it just tried to tell me, no, no, that that didn't happen. Forget about it. It's like, I'm not stupid. I just watched that last episode. I, you, you can't do this to me. And, like, I, that's that's a problem I had, too, where... It'd be fine if he was just an asshole the entire time because that's okay. I can get around that because he's, you know, he's still the he's like I said, he's the the cocky, hot-blooded asshole type where you can make that work. You can have him just kind of be an asshole the whole time, but you can't have him playing and frolicking with children and juggling with clowns and then have him be <laughs> the psycho asshole cocky bastard guy the in the very same next episode, scene by the in way. the same episode or the very next scene or anything like that because it's it's weird there's a weird contrast there it'd be like if fucking koga was like hanging out with kids and petting puppies in the park and like big <laughs> smiles and then immediately he goes back to being koga in the very next scene it doesn't make any, it, it it doesn't make any sense like if they had kept him at the idea where from the beginning, because the first time you see him, he's kind of a sort of threatening badass that can throw a quip out. That would have been a fine character for somebody, but they just don't keep it like that. Like if he was just like, like you said, a kind of a cocky, arrogant, arrogant asshole, kind of like a more confident type of, I, I, I hate to say it like this, but a more confident Spider-Man, I guess you could say. It's like, he's just quippy. He can quip and he can have fun, and but he's super arrogant about his abilities. That'd be fine, but they don't do that. And then there's times where, like, they make him, like, a fucking crybaby <laughs> a lot. They make him a fucking little baby. It's just, like, And, like, there's there's doing? nothing necessarily wrong with having him be an emotional character, too, even sure. if he was still, like, a hard-ass. Because, I mean, even Koga had the moments where he's... I mean, Koga never really He cried. cracked what looked like a smile. Yeah, he, he kind of moved his lips upward somewhat. <laughs> and he, he, he got a little misty-eyed at one point when he thought his girlfriend died, and that's about yeah, it. Yeah, but, like, that worked with Koga because that was consistent. Exactly. But with Ryuga, it's just he's not consistent at all. And it sucks, too, because the first two, three episodes, I thought, okay, I know people don't really like this guy, but I'm kind of enjoying him. But it's like the more we went on and on, like all, like when, once we got to the end, I was just like, you know what? I can very much see why this guy wasn't popular, and I kind of don't want to see him again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's unfortunate. Like I still, by the end, I kind of liked Ryuga, but I I definitely don't. I don't think he's a particularly great protagonist. I think out of out of the Garos, he's definitely the weakest of the Garos. At least out of the ones I've seen, I still haven't seen Flowers of Makai yet, so I don't know. I don't know. Uh, oh, that can change. 
I don't generally know the the overall opinion of Raiga, but um, I have it. Raiga, Raiga, yes. You fucking lazy Fuck, bastards. You fucking co. I mean, hey, look, blame Koga because that's his kid, motherfucker. You just you just changed the first syllable. I mean, then again, <laughs> then again, Koga's dad is named Taiga, so his dad did the same thing to him. So I guess that's fair. <laughs> They're just like. Uh, I think if a name is not efficient, just change oh, it's, the it's, letters. It's like Boruto. It's like, oh, let's just change the letter. Fuck it. Nobody's oh, you mean Burrito? Know. Yes. <laughs> like that one like that one translation kept calling him. Uh. Um, but, but yeah, like, again, I didn't hate him. I just don't think... Honestly, I don't think he could carry a show with himself. Like, he can't... He doesn't... He no, is definitely. not if, what I call a main hero. If we didn't have the other knights, this show would be much, much oh. more of a miserable experience. <laughs> Well, okay, I guess the other knight, because the other, one of them doesn't have a fuck, has less of a personality than Ry- I said Raiga. The, the, <laughs> fuck, there are too many Garos. There are too many goddamn Garos. <laughs> um, but, but, like, to, to keep on Ryuga, I guess because we can also talk a little bit about his plot, because his plot, it, it is pretty much essentially the plot of the show anyways. He, he's, he's Garo, but he sucks ass at being Garo. That's he a is, plot. <laughs> he has quite possibly one of the worst track records for a superhero I've seen <laughs> sometime. In in no less than eight different instances over the first half of the series, Ri- I was Ryuga. That's his name. I have to. Re- I'm going to remember this. Ryuga. I'm not going to call him the wrong name. You could just call I, him Dog Guy. Because when I fuck. Because when I kept fucking talking to myself like a weirdo trying to remember this i kept calling him koga because i'm stupid (laughs) in no less than eight different times over the course of like the first half of the series shit (laughs) (laughs) ryuga ryuga blows his fucking cover as a makai knight either by directly showing somebody that he telling or showing somebody that he's a makai knight or having right? his identity or the existence of horrors loudly broadcasted to the people around him. He's a fucking idiot. He is he is a colossal moron. I have the thing not- is, like, he's directly or indirectly responsible for at least three people dying in this show. At, at bare minimum, like, directly responsible for their He death got Michi's of- ankle broken. Fucking... He is, he is just the worst. I fucking fucking Matt Murdock has a better track record of keeping his secret identity intact. All right, come on, dude. That motherfucker can't even see. He can't even see exactly. Well, Ry- well, Ryuga couldn't see for like th- like twenty minutes, but still. That's tr- well, that's true. Yeah, and then he really was like Daredevil because he he was blind and he had a terrible secret identity. <laughs> but no, but but it's true. Like he's such a complete idiot. And the thing is, usually. And everyone who who is in the server knows I usually like, you know, heroic idiots. Like I fucking love Shinji from fucking from fucking Ryuga. I love that guy. But Ryuga he's just an idiot. He, like he, he's I'm, not the I'm fun sorry, kind of idiot. The fuck? He's not the fun kind of idiot where his his buffoonery is like it's meant to be silly or like him being kind of stupid is you know, it's played for laughs. He's just stupid because the the plot is written for him to make stupid decisions to further the plot. He's only stupid because otherwise half the show doesn't happen. Yeah, basically, yeah. Basically, yeah. And it's and it's really hard to get behind him because I'm just looking at him like, dude, what the fuck? <laughs> Stop. Stop being st- don't do this. Like there was literally a point. I think it was the one with Michi. And yes, Michi is in the show. There's a lot of Gaim alumni in the show. Well, I shouldn't say alumni because they were in the show before Gaim. But whatever. This was, this was, I think, technically speaking, this was this started filming right around the time that uh, that Gaim was. Uh, okay, so I, I have I would have to double check just to make sure. But hang on a second, because uh, it was it was 2013, so I forget exactly when the show ended. But let me double check. Okay, so. Last episode was no date. Wonderful. Um, <laughs> okay. Uh, September 2013. So, Gaim started in. Uh, let's 
see here. So like two weeks later, Gaim started. Jesus Christ. Yeah. So they're so they're basically doing double duty on this shit. Yeah. That's okay. uh, pretty impressive to be entirely honest. Yeah. Um but so but like like that one I think it was the episode with him where he like straight up goes to him and he's just like Oh uh, these things are horrors. I killed them. And I'm like, why would you tell him? Why would well, you tell him? Well first of all he he stalks Michi to his house and stands outside. Oh, that's outside, another thing he does. Stands outside his house, smiling like a freaking serial killer. You I know, want to touch my little hole. The episode after his secret identity is blown and he's branded as a wanted murderer, he follows this kid to his house. His kid, who, whose dad happens to buy, be, by the way, one of the one of the heads of the, the fucking local militia, which, you know, genius move there, Ryoga. But like, like we made fun of fucking Koga in Makai Senki with how fucking stupid he could be. He Koga looks like a fucking Harvard graduate next to Ryuga. Uh, he, like he's what a, the fuck? He is he is a free, like Golden Knight, more like Brainlit Knight. Jeez, <laughs> he's like that. That gold is like gold plated, my dude. Fucking, it's not real. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the thing. Half the show is not even gold anyways. I know, exactly. Yeah, he's black for most of the show up until, like, the last two episodes. That's just, that's just how much he sucks. Yeah. He <laughs> sucks. Although I will say, I did like the black suit. I think it was a nice decision. I think the the black with the gold accents looked really good. Yeah, it's too bad it was fucking CG most of the It time. was, yeah. Too bad it was fucking CG 90% of the show like everybody else, but... Yeah. You know. But, yeah, Ryuga... But go go away, go 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 to the corner, honey. You got to think about what you've done, and what you've done is kill multiple people. <laughs> what you've done, you know, what you've done is is ruin the local ecosystem by being such a moron that you've, you know, you've you've permanently exposed them to the horrors that are the universe and the the Makai realm and all of this shit. Genius, genius, genius move. I mean, shit, you could. Basically, say he's almost responsible for one of the main villains being made. I mean, no, he's literally responsible for one of the main villains being made because he's fucking. He, without him being like relate in involved with them at all, they wouldn't have become a horror at all. So it's literally his fault. Congratulations for you, guy. Nice job. You've Farad. ruined your own life. You've played yourself. So enough about the fucking crayon eater. Let's talk about the best character in the show, which is Guy from Gokai Shu. Yeah, Go- Gokai Silver, uh, I think his name was Takeru in the show. Yes, who the is, only Takeru that I actually like in Toku so true. far. Who is the best character in the show because he's ch- he's just a horny shit poster the entire series. He's great. He he's is so fun. He is so genuinely charismatic and fun and I wish he was the main character. I genuinely yes. wish he was the main character. Exactly what I was about to say. Yes. He's, because it, he's so, like you said, he's such a charismatic son bitch that every time he's on screen, I am drawn to him. Like, you are the fucking star here, my dude. He just has this natural swagger with his, with his acting skills and his personality. He's just... Every single line he has just oozes personality. He's just like he—you can tell he th- he knows that he has the biggest dick in the room, and he swings it around all day, every day, because that's just how he acts. He's just—he is just smugness personified. He's so fucking great, and only that. But he gives w- probably one of her, one of his better performances in this show. Oh yeah, I think he's the, always on his A game. The, yeah, it's it's a game the entire time. I think the funniest thing is that like despite being the 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 comedic relief more or less, he's not only more competent than Ryuga is, that he has a higher track record of successfully defeating horrors than Ryuga does. <laughs> it's not only that, it's but he has a legitimately genuinely impressive. Good, but he has like a legitimately good story arc. Oh yeah, yeah. He, he's got. He has good, a story arc. I should he say. has a story arc. I guess. Yeah. And I love it. I love every moment he is on screen. Like he is bar fucking none 
great. Like, there's really nothing much I can say besides he's just fun. He's fun. Like, shit, like, if you liked Gokai Silver, this is him just, like, if, turned up to 11. If you liked Go- Gokai Silver and wanted to see him have multiple sex scenes, go watch the show. <laughs> I'm I'm kind of impressed that he got so many, all in the span of, like, five episodes. I mean, hey, there's somebody on this. There was somebody on the crew who was horny for Gokai Silver. I mean, look, I don't blame him, but like, goddamn, dude, just just go at it. Not only that, but he gets the he's probably the only one who gets like a legit power up in this show. Yeah, he gets a legit power up by getting his fucking hand chopped off, and then he gets a cool robot hand and turns into a shield. And I think it shot a laser beam once. I'm not entirely sure. I, that might have been something else. So, is this, so he's just like Venom, Venom Takaru. I guess so. Yeah, he's <laughs> he's great. He's a great character, honestly, dude. He was the one, he, like, when he was on screen, especially towards the end, I kept thinking to myself, man, this show would have been a lot better if it was based on him and it wasn't called Garo. That's true. I, I'll, I'll get a little bit more into that when we get to our final thoughts a little later on, but, like, he was great. Uh, now we get to uh, Agri, or Aguri, or whatever. He has the same fucking name as the black dude, as the black <laughs> ranger from Ghost Sager. Uh, everybody's favorite lemon-scented mad scientist, uh, Warren Statesman, who I uh, did not... Fresh re- off beating up a hooker. Who I did not realize was Warren Statesman until somebody in the server made yep. a Kiter joke. And I was like, I was so confused, because I'm like, I don't, I don't get it. Is this like, is this a joke about the, the movie? Is this like, is this some random reference about his costume? So I looked it up, like, oh, oh, it's Rielma. Okay. I don't know how I didn't recognize him. I mean, he's he's, he does look pretty different. I'll be honest. He does. He does. I think it's the hair, definitely, and the glasses, and just just the fact that he's well, he doesn't have a personality in the show. Whereas you know, Rioma Rioma was Rioma. He does have a personality. It's just Uriu from Bleach. (laughs) That's it. That's his personality. Oof. Man, that's am that's I wrong? Harsh. Am you're, I wrong? You're not wrong, but that's harsh. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, that's literally all I saw when I saw him come on screen. It's like I see the glasses, I see the haircut, and oh, great! He uses a bow. He uses a bow and arrow. This is bleach. This is bleach. <laughs> well, it's bleach because it's completely fucking nonsensical half the time. Ah! I fucking wish. Ugh. I dude, if this was a Kubo, nonsensical you have- as Makai Senki. If this is a nonsensical as Makai Senki's last half, I'd be totally into it. You know what? That's fair. I think that's fair. Um, but yeah, he has no character. He's just whatever. He he's the cold asshole that gets broken in like the last couple episodes. That's really it. Yeah, they, he he doesn't even get like one episode dedicated to him. He just he, <laughs> he just, gets a scene, and then Ryuga is just like. Bitch, you're doing it wrong. Just get all your arrows and just stab him. Yeah, he gets like an... Oh my god. The the part where he grabbed a bunch of his arrows and stabbed the monster with it was hysterical. (laughs) I think it was funnier too because the main villain makes a joke about it in the next episode. He's like, come on, dude. Come on. Did you really... You really did that? Are you serious that you actually did that? Oh my god! Fucking hack! You, you, you late, you lamo, you late, you. What are you? What the hell are you thinking, dude? Um, Ugh, so, I love it. So the next character we have to talk to is a literal talk thought. What? We're talking to them. Oh, I didn't realize we're that schizo. Oh, no, no, the next... I said talking about, not talking no, to. No, you said... You definitely said talk to. The next character oh, we're going to talk to... You... Oh, uh... So, the next character we're talking about is a literal thought. Yeah. She, uh, her name's Ryan. Rian. Rian. Uh, Bl- she had a magic gun. <laughs> that uh, used diamonds for bullets? Y- yeah. <laughs> Fucking stupid, but okay. I mean, look. It's cool. No, it's not. It, it's cool. No, it's, it's not. Yes, it is. It's it's, it's, it's horribly impractical. it's horribly impractical. But you have bullets made of diamonds. That's cool. So what? Look at how, look at the fucking trouble she has to go through to get one. <laughs> like uh. no, this is the, the 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 cost does not outweigh the profit here. 
I mean, maybe she just likes she just really likes getting dicked down by Australian dudes. But there's I mean, you there's know what? no win win. Maybe she does. I don't. Yeah, sure. We don't fucking know anything about her. No, we do. She she hates poor people. <laughs> That's true. She did say she that. She hates the poor. Oh, uh, damn. <laughs> I can't believe there's a relatable character in this show. <laughs> she hates the poor people so fucking much. That's her character. Ugh. And then and then once she's like, Ryuga dick me down, and Ryuga's just like, no. He's like, no way, fag. <laughs> <laughs> no way, fag. She oh, now we gotta edit that. Uh, she, literally, she literally says it for absolutely no good reason. I know, right? And then, they, then later they decide... Oh wait, yeah. Uh, actually, she she knew Ryuga as a kid, and she had a crush on him. That's why. Like, oh, okay, cool. Would have been nice to know about that. Literally, any point before the final episode, guys. Oh, so 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 that kind of goes against her whole not hating poor people because Ryuga's a fucking hobo. <laughs> I mean, look, you're a Makai knight. You're kind of required to live in the woods for a decade. Just, actually, just that kind of reminds me. Ryuga's just like a really bad mixture of Koga and Zero. <laughs> kind of. I think he that's really the best is. way to explain it. It's like they they took the best parts of Re, uh, of Koga and Zero, and they just they just didn't mix them right. They just hoped it worked. They just kind of hoped it would work. It's like mixing so that was... and Dr Pepper. You know, you, uh... you think you think you think that's something that'll work, but it doesn't. It doesn't work at nasty. all. Nasty. <laughs> yeah. Um. So that's that's Rion, because that's literally all she does in this entire show. Oh wait, no, no, no. She she has a she has a friendship with one of the main villains, even though she's talked to her only twice. I like. See, here's the thing. I liked that idea they were kind of setting up where, oh, she's friends with this chick, and then this chick becomes a horror, and there's that you know, oh no, I'm a Makai priest, and my friend is a horror. Ah, uh, but they talk once, and then she becomes a horror, and then the next time they talk, we're it's, we're in the end game basically. So. There's no there's no real build up or conflict to it because the friend immediately reveals that she's a horror to the fr- uh, to Rian. So it there's no like there's no build up or like dramatic tension. It's just oh, my friend is evil now. Okay. Oh cool. no. Oh no. Evil friend. Wow, what an original plot. Uh, but yeah, there was really nothing to her, and it's weird because like there was so much screen time. Like, it, I she has to be like either a popular idol or a model or something because she was given a lot of screen time in this show. I think she like, was, but I don't remember off the top. Like of my head. a lot of shit. Um, next guy we gotta talk about is uh, Burai, Priest Burai, who is, and I swear I thought he was from more things that I've seen. But I guess he's only from that one episode of Makai Senki as the samurai. <laughs> I, I, I'm not going to lie. Right? I saw I, him and I was just like, he's been, I, he, I thought I seen him in like six other shows. He has that face. I, I know exactly what you're talking about. I I had that reaction a while. I was like, oh, hey, that's that guy from this. Oh, it's not? Okay. That was a, that was a waste of my time. <laughs> oh, look, it's Ultra 7 again. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, that'd be great if Ultra 7 just showed up again That'd be great dude. I mean he's been in so many shows that we've done He uh, has, he has been uh, But yeah, so Priest Burai, he's he's whatever He's like the generic mentor character That's just kind of okay Yeah, he, He's fine He's fine, he has some fun stuff Especially near the end Where he, he gets off his ass and actually starts helping But otherwise he's just like He's the, the mentor. He doesn't really do or contribute a whole lot. <laughs> the one time he tries to fight somebody, he gets jobbed out off screen. <laughs> Such is the life of being a side character. Such is the life of being a fucking Makai priest. Oh my god, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm glad that they kept that at least. Makai priests are fucking useless. That is true. That is the only consistent plot in the uh, this show with the Lord, <laughs> is that Makai priests are horrible at their jobs. <laughs> They really are like shit. Like fucking Rian has a fucking magic gun and she still sucks. Um, I think she kills like one guy with it, not counting the final boss, technically speaking. <laughs> yeah. Um I guess after that I guess we do talk a little bit about the villains. I mean there's really only two that have actual characters. The other ones don't really have anything to them. Um, there's so they're technically our first real main villain was uh Rion's friend, I think her name was Enho. Yeah. She's like 
they kind of set up an interesting arc with her where she's the chief of I guess we need to explain the uh, the setting of the show where the show is set in this this weird sci-fi dystopian like utopia city or it's like oh it's a planned society or it's like oh everybody's got a job everybody's got you know we got all this and that nobody pays taxes nobody needs health care nobody needs you know you know everything's provided for people and of course it's all basically a plant run by horrors pretty much um and so there's your your obligatory uh dystopian utopia society stormtroopers uh who have really lame costumes but the, their so, masks kind of look like did have you ever seen the uh the live action skull man costume yeah yeah i get what you're trying to go like. for they it reminded like me. It was reminding me of something else, but I couldn't put the name to it for some reason. Uh, I know. Just I know what you're thinking. Of, I I because I, I had that thing too. Because I I thought of Skullman and I thought of something else as well, but I can't remember either. There. Either way, so she's like their their leader more or less, and they set up a thing where she has an early conflict with Ryuga. And he lear- she learns that, oh, okay, he's actually kind of a good guy, and the- there's these horror things and whatever. And they kind of set up this plot about her being, like, corrupted by horrors and being slowly turned into one while trying to work with-, with Ryuga there. And it's a fun, it's a fun little plot, and I liked where they were going with it, but then it just ends with her becoming a horror for the rest of the show, and then she doesn't do anything because she's... she no longer has any kind of personality or anything like that. She up just until- becomes a full villain. She's just a full villain and doesn't really do anything or say anything interesting. She has some fun fights, but she she loses all of her character when her arc res- gets resolved by having her turn into a monster and then and then nothing. She's just she's just kind of a set dressing villain basically. See, what I thought they were actually going to do was they're going to do a thing where for like that one that one split second at the end, right before she dies, she gets her humanity back. And she lets, she tells the villains, or she tells the heroes, kill me, set me free, blah, blah, blah. And they don't really even do that. She just, they just kind of mentioned, oh, she smiled when she died. And, like, I guess that's fine enough, but, like, there's so little in between her becoming a full-on horror and that being brought up that I was just like, I get it, but you're not doing it right. (laughs) Again, I, I liked where they were going with it. Mm-hmm. But when they resolved it, it was resolved too early, and then now there's just nothing left to do with the character, which is a shame yeah. because it's she's a pretty good actress, and I really like her fight scenes. But she it's, just kind see, of with, with an episode with a show like this, especially a show this short. I think you could have dragged it out until at least episode twenty two. Could have maybe you know you know not even necessarily like yeah if you want to have her become a horror you can do that drag it out a little longer it's just once once she becomes a horror she loses basically everything that made her interesting and yeah now well, that's she what just, i'm saying like you could have at least there. like had like a like a like a conflict like an inner conflict with her where like it's like she's seeing what the horror part of her is doing she's just like i don't want to do that like from the inside not like a split heckle and jai type of thing you know what i mean and like they they try to set up a, set up a thing where Oh, she's still friends with Rion because she's trying to get info on Ryuga and keep his keep tracks on him. And oh, she's doing this because she's a, like a double agent or whatever. But immediately when she starts actually trying to do that, she blows her cover and she's like, "Yeah, okay, I'm a horror. Whatever. Fuck you guys. Bye." And <laughs> then they don't do anything with her again. Um, but yeah, that's just pretty much that's pretty much all for her. Um, the other one we got is a. Uh, Toshi, Koshi, Koshi, right? So there's there's Sonshi who. Oh, the, Sonshi. Uh, well, you're thinking of another character. That's I'm thinking of the uh, the other horror villain. I'm, t- I'm thinking about dude. the one that had the fucking cool ass kung fu. That's the one I'm talking about. That's Sonshi. Yes. Yes. Uh, who is the best villain because he's just he's just an ass kicking machine. Basically, and he's awesome. He's, he's awesome. Like, yeah. literally every time he's on screen, it's like, okay, put my shit down. I got to pay attention to this. Oh, yeah, absolutely. All of his fights are absolutely oh, the they, oh. greatest. <laughs> Dude, That I'm sorry, but that one on the fucking train, fucking 
beauty right Dude, there. Absolutely best fight in the entire series where he three V ones the Makai Knights, doesn't even transform until right at the very end. He is just handing their asses to him the entire time. That that fight was incredibly creative too, because it's like he's doing all these like he's doing these things where it's like he just understands how to do it. Like one my, my one of my favorite little details is the uh how what's his name? Uh, Aguri, he's fucking holding on to the train from the outside, and he kicks the window from the inside to get him. And I'm like, whoa, that's fucking cool. That like that little detail is just so like, oh, that's so good. That's efficient, my dude. That's efficient. Oh yeah, absolutely. It's so and like that's basically all of his fights. All of his fights are just awesome. Like even the last one that he had, where they had a fucking tr- they had a fucking car run him over. Yeah, that they, was pretty they, fucking awesome. That was that was a really great shot too. Because for one, you you couldn't really tell it was a mannequin until unless you, you slowed could, it down because it was couldn't. it. I mean, well, you kind of could. It, See, that's that, that was what made it charming to me. It did. You you kind of like it happened so quick. The actual shot of him getting hit. And it's like it's shot with like a security camera in like a like a shipping container. Honestly, the thing that br- brought me out of that scene was the fact that 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 crappy ass panel van could plow through a shipping container like that. <laughs> oh, that's oh, oh, oh that's what gets you out of it, but not needing diamonds for bullets. Fuck you. I, look, look, there's a there's a certain level of acceptable crazy that I can take, and that oh, that, that, that crosses oh, the line. <laughs> All right. <laughs> that crosses the line, okay? Oh, that guy crosses the line here, okay. Needing diamonds to make magic bullets, that's fucking normal to me, all right? <laughs> Those are no- that's normal That's normal fantasy shit. I've done a, that enough in Wizard 101. A, a, fucking SU, a fucking suburban soccer mom van plowing through a shipping container like it was made of paper. No, 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 well, no, Don't no, fuck fam. with soccer mom vans. No, 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 no. I, I can't take this. This isn't real. This is, this is stupid. This is too unrealistic. This is too... Garo is too unrealistic now. <laughs> uh, it, it jumped the shark when it hit the when it hit the panel. Mm. I mean, I joke, but that's kind of my overall problem with the show is that it it lacks the charm. That the, the, I don't know how to phrase this. My problem with with Yami Terra overall is that it's. It lacks what made Garo and Makai Senki so effective, and that was that those shows were subtle. They had subtlety to their their fights and their their horror moments and their setting. And look, I know this is Garo we're talking about, and the word subtle describes Garo about as well as it like it Garo is as subtle as a freight train speeding at full speed on fire. Blasting so the end music, of Maki Senki? Basically. No, but but I know the, what you the mean, show, though. This show starts at the finale of Maki Senki and just just goes up from there. And it's it, it kind of takes me out of it because it it's just ridiculous. It's, it's silly. It's not very effective horror because it's just... It's all this silly fucking wirefu kung fu shit all the time. There's no tension to the horror. There's no build-up. <laughs> It's, it's just not that interesting to me. Unfortunately, like well, it's well, yeah. fun, it's exciting because it's you got all this weird shit happening and it's all like oh cool <clears throat> sick flips and you know ninja shit, but it's it's not Garo. This isn't Garo to me. Well, because it's because it's, it's missing that. And again, I I know I know you you joke about it, but like. And and I'm gonna use this, and I know this isn't the most fair comparison, but using the episode of the samurai from Makai Senki and comparing it to the train fight episode, there's such subtle moments in that episode from Makai Senki that, like, when you do eventually get to the big fight at the end, it's earned. With this one, you're always at that level of the final fight where it's just like, well. Y- I get, like, it's almost to the point where you get desensitized. You know, if I'm sorry, but if I could use a wrestling analogy, if I can go to wrestling real quick, it's like, if you see somebody do a Canadian Destroyer off a ladder every fucking week, eventually you're going to say, that's kind of fucking old. But if you see a Canadian Destroyer doing off a ladder only at WrestleMania, 
then that's fucking awesome because you never see that shit. Exactly. And that's kind of the idea here where it's like you have to know where to pick your spots. And unfortunately, Yamio Terasu does not know how to pick its spots well. And it just kind of comes off as just just crazy for the sake of crazy, which is not what Garo is, which I think is why it suffers so much because it doesn't have that Amamiya subtlety that we had from before. Because, again, he's not directing or writing this one. No, exactly. That's I think I think that's what uh what a lot of people realize is that Garo was as effective as it was because it had Keita Amamiya it had a central vision from him and he kinda knew what he wanted to do with it. And then when somebody else takes the rein, they like, Oh, well people liked all this stuff, let's just do more of that and they kinda they kinda missed the point. I think that's that's really the problem overall with this show, is that it it missed the point of what made Garo entertaining. Yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, so now we can get to our basically our final villain, basically. Our, the, the, uh, the, the true final boss of the show, uh, the, the editor dude from Ryuki. Uh, oh my god, it, that was him! I, I was so fucking confused, like, you're from somewhere, and I can't, and I don't know from where. I... Holy shit. <laughs> I really liked him just overall as a character. The he's way they built shit. He's just he's such a fucking shit heel the whole show. Here's the thing. You can tell immediately from the first episode that he's in that he's going to be a villain, but the way he's built up as being a villain and the build up to the reveal and him taking center stage is so well done. I I kind of didn't think they were going to have him be a villain after a point. I think he's like, oh, okay, there's just some weird shit going on, and he just he's like a red herring or something, whatever. No, he's legitimately the real main villain of the show. It's it's such a great twist there. and It fucking is. And his actor really sells it well, because he starts off being like, he's kind of normal, and he's kind of like, oh, you know, I just... You know, oh, all this weird horror shit. It's it's you know, it's scaring me, dude. I want I want to help you guys fight these monsters. You know, my my dad is you know my dad is the one controlling the horrors. We all figured this out. You know, I kind of want kind of want to help you guys. And then then we find out that he's he's actually the real main villain, and he was just fucking with everybody the entire time. And then is there this build up to him? And it's like the the thing the ma- the major thing is that like I don't really know what the hell his plan was. I don't even think really he knew what his plan was. I think he was just he was just kind of fucking around with horrors, and that's fine. That's yeah, fine as a that's villain. basically what he was doing. He just wanted to he just, essentially just find out how fucked horrors can get. He just wanted to have like an army of horrors. Of, he just wanted to turn people into horrors just because he could. And you know what? That's a reasonable enough motive for a villain. And he was so fucking entertaining too. He, like, like yeah, the once once time he went, was like, what the oh, fuck. Yeah, once he went full villain, he was so genuinely entertaining. And I think the best part is is the big twist where where after he takes center stage as the main villain, Ryuga and the gang bust into his secret base and corner him in his office. He's like he's like, Oh yeah, oh it's time for my cool transformation. Uh, come and fight me guys and he's like he's like fucking flailing around like a spaz and all the other guys are just kinda like, What's what's he doing? And he's like they, they they do the cool lighter trick with him and he's like they then they do the other thing where they have they have the other horror detector thing and it's like oh wait wait he's not a horror what oh fuck oh god and that was a pretty like, good twist too I was that just like, was oh, such what that was such an effective twist I genuinely didn't see that coming I love it I love the way he sells it too he's like oh oh what you you idiots thought I was a horror this whole time. Oh man, oh that's that's fucking rich, dude. Oh man, hey, like hey, hey, Enho, come come here. These these assholes thought I was a horror. Come, fuck, let's laugh at them. <laughs> it, he, oh. Again, he sells it so well because he's just a fucking shit heel. He's just loving being an asshole. It's great. And again, like you said, it's super effective too because the way he builds himself up, like, oh, look at me. Oh, oh I'm not a horror, blah, blah, blah. It makes the way he fucking meets his end just that much more satisfying. Oh, yeah. Where it's just like, oh, well, now you are a horror. Get fucked. He gets he gets cornered by a generic horror mook in a bathroom and gets eaten. 
and now he's a real horror. And then he just gets shot in the head by the magic gun, and that's it. He dies screaming on his his feet f- for for mercy. And you know what? That's a great. That's a good ending for him. That's that's the ending he deserved. Is crying and flailing for mercy like a giant bitch. Uh, it's, there there really isn't anything like because they they try to do an overarching plot but it it doesn't really matter because they don't introduce it until like halfway and there's there's something about something something evil horror demon whatever the fuck honestly uh, the whole the whole thing with the horrors and then and like the karmic horrors and magic horrors was kind of where I'm just like Bleh. yeah they, they they're like oh there are humans who were turned into real horrors and they still have their human personalities but they can't be detected and all oh, that and like why what's the point why why can't you just have it be like oh the villains have a thing and that's preventing them from tracking horrors or whatever or whatever the fuck you're like there's so many horrors in the city that it's impossible to track them or whatever like that like honestly you could have just said that yeah no, we we need to introduce a whole brand new type of horror that we can't detect because uh, reasons. I honestly don't even really get why though, because like the whole magic horror thing just kind of made the whole thing kind of confusing. It did, it was, especially it was just because, like, like, wait, like, am I missing something here? Like, like the, they, the whole gimmick of them was that oh, we can't track them, but then like nine episodes in, they get a way to track them, so it doesn't matter anymore. But I guess we still supposed to care that they exist, and like, 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 to- I think his name was Tose, uh, the the main villain. His whole plan seemed to be to try and turn Ryuga into a horror, for basically just because he could. Because I mean, he's he's Garo. If you have Garo under your control, you win. I mean, that's pretty much what it is. But like, he basically just wanted to do it just because he could. I mean that's fair enough motive, you know. That's you know don't need anything more complex than that in this kind of show. It's, but it, the whole thing about like the the su- super duper evil spooky horror demon whatever the fuck god thing doesn't really contribute at all. And there's this whole thing about like oh it's, he's he's gonna wake up and there's this song. Hon- and honestly, there's all the this whole and- thing with that with that part, like the whole thing with that villain was just super unnecessary. It was. And the whole fight with him was... It, there were some fun parts with the, the giant laser cannon. But, it, like, his his final form is lame because he's he's just some asshole in a business suit with, like, with cubes stuck to his head. And they, he doesn't even get, like, a cool horror form. He's just some... He's just some old dude. He's not even that, like... He's not even, like, a cool final boss. That's what I'm saying. Like, it's just... The whole thing was just unnet. Like you literally could have just kept it to the to the shit heel. You could have just kept it to him, and that would have been fine. Like, oh, it's just something so he can take over the city with horrors. That's it. Just stop him, and that's all. Okay, fine. That's good enough for me. But no, like that whole we have to have a big fight scene. We have to have this big, big old thing with the evil dude Zedom now. Like it's like no, you don't. You could just end it. Like. Season one ended like that. You don't really need a giant ass big monster fight. You know, you don't really need that. But I guess you do. Yeah. So, um, I guess so. I will, I will say though, and I don't know if you agree, but I I will say, I the one thing I will I will give this show. It did with a lot of the with. What? Because you know the other two Garo seasons we've seen, they they do it effectively to show us that that horrors are bad people, but this show really pushed that angle where it's just like, no, horrors are really fucked and bad people. Like they show like this montage, and I, I know, what you're, and and I think you know what episode I'm talking about, where they're in the plant of the souls, and they show <laughs> like all of those people, and I'm just like. They oh, just, they just have the literal like assembly line of people being like murdered for their their soul soda assembly line. It's it's so it's cartoonish. It's genuinely cartoonish. And it's it. Look, the horrors were already cartoonishly evil beforehand. So that's that's nothing new here. But 
it's somehow more cartoonish than it already was with the with the literal literal assembly line plant of human sacrifice. Sure, but like I still think it was a little bit more effective at this with it at this point because I'm just like yeah, that was actually a pretty fucked scene when you really think about it. Like I think the way they sold it was better than the way they presented it, if you know what I mean. I kind of get what you're going for. I I I, I think, personally I, think, I think that... it was I think it was more of the Takaru's acting when you saw the fucking family fade away. I was just like, okay, I actually like that. Yeah, that that was really good. I liked that, and they, he had a lot of really great emotional moments with the, that that kind of whole story arc, which kind of gets paid off in the end. It kind of doesn't, but I think it's it's fine. How the, I think I like I like how they left off that story arc, but overall that that kind of sequence was a little too cartoonish for me, but I do I do agree that that specific moment with Hitakeru was was really good. Though, though it is kind of weird how, like, they, they kind of made it look... I, I, I think what's weird is that it... And, and I don't know if you'll agree with me, but it felt way more like a scene you would see in Kamen Rider than you would see in Garo. Oh, a little you bit. You know what I mean? I kind of know what you mean, yeah. Like, this is something I would be seeing in Toei. Like, you know, maybe I wouldn't even say Ryder. Maybe, like, like a like a Sentai. Like, I could totally see this in, like, oh, the, 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 in, like, Bupu Sentai Poo Rangers. Like, oh, no, they have taken the, the tears of the people and they're draining them in the factory. I could totally see that. And when I think about it, like, I could even see, like, I can even picture like all the rangers like s- like side by side in that factory with the with all the silhouettes being sucked of their tears. I can see that. You know what I mean? I'm just like that's I can t- I get what you're saying. Yeah, you know what? I I kind of agree with you there. It, it and that kind of ruins it. it a, l- a little bit. It kind of ruins it now that I say that. Mm. But I mean, I, I again, I I like the idea that like they show they kind of do show horrors a bit more a bit more brutal than they usually do. Like, a little bit more brutal than they usually do, but I think that's also because there was more of them. Like, there was a lot more of them than in usual shows. I think that's... I think that's more just a... a symptom of the... the way the format has changed, where... the previous two were more, like... there were more standalone anthology kind of horror plots, where here's a spooky thing happening... There's a horror behind it, and here's how that affects these people involved in this plot. And then Koga walks in and kills them at the end, and that's it. That's the plot. Whereas here, it's the focus is more on the characters trying to stop the horror, and it's more like a traditional toku plot where here's a villain, here's their scheme, here's our heroes reacting to it, rather than like a straight horror plot. Here, it's more like it's more like a sci-fi. It's kind of horror a little bit, but it's. It's a little too cartoony at points to be really effectively scary. Well, like, yeah, because I was going to say this is more like an idea of like, what if the horrors have kind of already won, kind of kind of thing. Like, kind of. And then, I, and to be fair, that does kind of again go to like what you're saying. Like, this is more like a generic Toku plot you would see in Ryder. Yeah, like the one with like, oh, here's the horror real estate agent showing off the house, and oh, hey, cool, check out the basement. Oh, there's. There's a group of horrors in here that are eating people that they lure into the basement, and that's it. That's their whole plan is, is they trick people to go into the basement, and then they eat them. And I don't know how anybody hasn't fucking noticed this before now, but I guess they haven't because plot. It's it's fine. This is fine. It's like- like I don't know how many like how many people need to die every episode before like one the city runs out of citizens and two somebody normal recognizes that there's something going on here. I don't know how the horrors have lasted this long. I guess everybody's just like I guess they just they're pumping something in the air to make people stupid. I mean they must. they, they may they might have they already kind of said that. I mean well no remember Jay the entire city is built on a volcano that is covered in volcanic ash. But that's a thing. That's what they said. They said that in the first episode. I know they said that, but that no, it doesn't make sense. And yes, no, it, it would doesn't, kill everyone there. It doesn't there. fucking make any sense. It would have killed the entire population of by now. They I mean, would all look, die. Look, it's it's obviously an excuse for the fact that they built it on an old uh, Makai priest village, and that's that's the whole thing with the finale there. And like, okay, like, all right, I kind of get where they're going with there, but still, it's like. 
with how many people these fucking guys kill every single day, you would think that somebody would have noticed by now, or, like, like the real military would have shown up. And I think that's the problem where it's, like, they're basically an independent city-state, so they... But it's not, like, everybody outside, I guess, is just still normal. So we, we don't know anything about what's going on outside of Vol City, so... For all we fucking know, everything else, it's, it's like fucking Mega City 1. This is the only city that exists anymore, so... I, I guess. It's I mean, to be fair, this is this is kind of the same problem I had with the fucking Skywall and build. But let's not get into <laughs> that. Let's not get into that until fucking November. Well, the, um, the Skywall was just like a fucking plot set dressing, and I guess that's kind of the same case here. But the problem is that you can't have the set dressing of like the super secret, like not necessarily a domed city, but like the the independent city state, and then have the villains running the independent city state butchering hundreds of thousands of people a week without nobody noticing it gets it strains the credibility of the existence of this secret society i mean that i mean that's the, that's the problem with the fact that there was this is supposedly some like it's like you said it's a, it's a fucking separated state from apparently japan of all like all every nobody nobody in japan either comes in or gets out of this fucking state which shinzo abe do your fucking job what's wrong with <laughs> well, it, you he did his job. He's not prime minister anymore. Oh, he's not. Who is it now? Fucking... I don't know. Some asshole. He's not funny. Hinorobu Kageyama is the new prime minister. <laughs> uh, he man, gives everyone a Dragon Ball. Man, what was what was the what was the point of having Zaruba in the show if you're not gonna fucking do anything with him? Oh, right. It's like he was there literally just to waste someone's budget. He was there because this is Garo, and we didn't have Hironobu Kageyama in it. But they couldn't Garo. afford him enough to be in more than a couple episodes. Yeah, so he's in, like, one scene an episode, if we're lucky. Okay, uh, actually, you know what, Jay? I have to ask this about Zara, but was that whole contract thing always a thing? I know it's a contract, but was that whole thing of, I need to take a day off of your life to feed a month of mine, was that always a thing? I don't remember them ever mentioning that at any point during the original series. No. Okay, so this is just something they brought up now. Yeah, I guess so. But, but you know what? It's an alternate continuity, so screw it. I guess that's just how Zaruba works. In Honestly, that's probably the weakest part about the about the show is that it has to be an alternate continuity. Like, that's the thing I is that, that, like, I'm fine with it being an alternate continuity if they, they did anything interesting with the way the knights worked or the the lore of the, the Makai world or Garo or anything. It's just... It's an alternate continuity to have an excuse for Koga to not be in the show, pretty much. Basically. I mean, but that's the thing. That's the biggest thing. Couldn't you have, and this is what I said earlier with Takadu, why couldn't you have just made it a different sector that didn't have to be protected by Garo? Make it in China. Make it in fucking some other place in Japan. Like, what Koga was in, like, what, Tokyo, I think? I think so. Make it in Osaka. Make it in Shibuya. I don't. I mean, fuck. I don't. Want, I don't think we want to go back to Shibuya yet. But like, make it in Shibuya. Make it in some fucking fucking farmland, the countryside. You don't have to make it near Garo. Shit. If you want to, make it. Go to some fucking forest and say this is fucking New Zealand for all I fucking care. Do something with that. You don't need to make it an alternate continuity because honestly, they don't do much with the alternate continuity like thing. The only thing they do is oh, New Garo. And they introduced new horrors, but really, with that, did you need, did you make a, need to make a new continuity for all of that? Not really. Guess it seems so. Unnecessary. It it it's a little unnecessary, but on the other hand, like you can't have a Garo show that doesn't have Garo in it. You know, let's 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 put Versus Road into the corner for a second. And where I'm, I'm zero using dragon this as a, blood. Well, okay, that's that's fine because that doesn't have Garo in the title, so we can get away with that. But Garo Zero Dragon Blood. Yeah, exactly. It'd be like if they did that. Like that's one thing. If it didn't have Garo in the title, and I'm, you know, perfectly fine. You know, you can just have it be set in the Garo universe, and it's just a different Makai Knight. Well, he. The problem is that you can't call it Garo if Garo is not in the show. So we need to have an excuse because we we can't get Koga's actor back for a third season. So uh, he's too expensive. He he got famous, so uh, we can't have him back. We can't afford him again. Uh, alternate continuity, whatever. And then 
we got this. And they're like, ah, uh, fuck it. We'll make it as kid. And we'll go back. And everybody liked it. So that worked. I don't know. It's... It's lame. It's lame. It's lame because, like... <sighs> you, you Again, I thought going into this show... You know what? Fuck it. We'll go into our final thoughts. We'll do it live. So we'll do it live. I'll write the script. So going into our final thoughts, and I'll start. And I'll start first because there's nothing else to say. Really, the biggest problem with this show is the fact that it has to be an alternate continuity because the new Garo isn't as fun as Koga, and that's saying fucking something. He's not as fun as Koga. The plot is not really that great. The only real Makai Knight that I liked that they introduced in the show was fucking Guy, and he didn't need to be introduced in this show. Fuck, mm. you could have introduced and all three of these guys as different Makai Knights in a different Garo show if you wanted to. I get it, Koga isn't here anymore, but fuck it. Do, revolve it around Zero from now on. What the fuck is that guy doing? Like, do Yeah, what's, like- what's Ray Fujita doing? I don't think he's doing anything but being back in Garo. But anyways, like I was saying, like, you know, just do something like that, or fuck... Do you do something else with it besides making an alternate continuity? Because what they did with the, what they did with this show was kind of shit. Not only that, but like, I'll be honest, but this show, without Amamiya's leadership, felt really fucking sloppy. The, oh yeah, like a lot of it felt sloppy. The actions, like the action from for a lot of it was good. A lot of it still felt sloppy. The camera cuts was sloppy. The editing was sloppy. The CG was sloppy. <laughs> Like so much Dude, of it I, felt slop- I could not find a single CG shot that didn't f- like they couldn't motion track the CG with the friggin' shaky cam. I, I could not find a single episode where like the CG is not jittering around with the camera. It's it's bad. It's just it's lazy. Making it CG was lazy. There's no excuse to make it CG other than budget, but. I mean, you you have you just pulled Garo's suit out of your ass at the end anyway, so it it makes it all just look like a waste of time. It it looks bad. It's not it's not effective fight scenes because you can't fucking tell what's going on, and it's just ugly because the designs aren't very good. And when the designs are good, you don't get to appreciate them because the CG is just either so moving around so fast you can't tell what's going on, or it's just it's it's the scene is so barely visible because it's just, it's either shaky cam or there's all this other shit happening. It's, it's that same issue that with the finale of Makai Senki, where there's just so much shit happening that you can't, you can't appreciate what's going on because it's just, it's just stuff. It's stuff is happening. Do you know what that stuff is? No, but it's stuff. The hiding of stunt doubles was extra fucking sloppy. The acting was pretty all right. If it was guy, it was fine. Everyone else was kind of just all right. The, the, the show just feels sloppy. It feels sloppy. And, it, and the worst part about it is that going into it, everyone always kind everyone kind of told me, don't expect much from it. Like, I've heard some people say it was the worst thing in the world. But, like, it's not. But a lot of people were telling me, you know, a lot of level-headed people were telling me, don't expect much. It's not that great. This is kind of where Garo was kind of shitting on itself. It's so just kind of going with tempered expectations and I did, and even then, this show was just not that good. And it sucks because I like Garo. Up to, like, last year, I was not into Garo, but now I'm legitimately a Garo fan, and now thinking about it, it's like, I it sucks that I find... It, it, you know what it is? It's like, it's like going to your favorite restaurant and finding a dish that you don't like, and you're just like, well, that's kind of disappointing. And that's what mm. this show is. This is a dish you don't like, and you're just like... Well, at least I can always order Makai Senki again or go back That's to true. fucking the original season. But this, uh, this, I just, I, I, n- I don't see myself ever going back to it unless we have to. Like, I don't see myself ever going back to it. This is dog, dog poo. There you go, Jay. Now it's your turn. Yeah. Uh, overall, I wouldn't say I hated Yami Terra. It's definitely the weakest of the Garo shows that I've seen, which is basically all of them, but flowers of Makai. Um, it's the action is when it's, when it's like practical effects, it's fine. 
it's a little goofy because it's it's just all this unnecessary wire foo and all this ridiculous like it's like watching watching like a like a, a wuxia movie on on steroids because it's just it's just stuff happening and there's there's no real cohesion to it the the plot doesn't matter the the horror aspect of the show is kind of non-existent anymore because everything is so cartoonish that it's hard to take anything seriously the the villains are mostly fine but it's that's kind of just overall it's fine it's not very good i wouldn't say i hated it but I kind of don't really enjoy it too much compared to the previous shows or really any of the other Garo shows that I've seen. I it's not the worst the series gets unfortunately, but it's definitely nowhere near the top. Well, I guess there you go. Uh I guess with that being said, since we are going on a break after Saber, before Sa- uh, until Saber ends. Uh, we're going to spin the wheel anyways, because fuck you. Yeah, might as well. Uh, maybe we'll do this after Saber. Probably not, because we'll probably forget. But uh, I'll remember. Let's... Especially if it's a bad one, I'll remember. Oh, yeah. It's yeah. a ninja. No, 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 it's not. No, it's not. No, it's not. Uh, it's time for time to get the rope. It's not. It's not a ninja. Don't worry. We're not we're not that fucking crazy. Not yet. Not yet. Uh uh What is this? Alright. Well if AJ's reacting like that, I'm probably going to have a much better reaction. Alright. Alright. Okay. Well Jay. All right. Let's you see liked, what we got. You liked Garo, didn't you? You liked yes. Garo. Yes. Do you want to stay in Garo? Well, it depends. What are we doing next? Well, lucky for you, we're not staying in Garo. We're doing Amazons. Ah, uh, you ah, got fucker. You. I fucking got you. You fucking got me, you bitch. <laughs> he got got. Yes. We're finally doing it. People have been asking us, legitimately have been asking us for a while. When are we gonna redo Amazons, or when are we gonna do, or when are we gonna do Amazons? Because technically, the uh, the other two are not canon anymore. And to be fair, the 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 one that that we did with season one is so garbage. That was when I was still using my fucking phone mic, and and that wasn't Jess, Jay. It was Jess using his fucking laptop microphone. It was awful. Uh, um, I didn't. E- I wasn't even here yet. <laughs> yeah. So we are going back, and uh. T- Depends, Jay. Do you want to just get it all out of the way right now? Not, 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 not in the same episode, but one season one, two, and the movie. Do you want to just do that in separate episodes, in succession, just to fucking get it out of the way? Yeah, might as well. All right. Well, there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Fuck you. <laughs> We're gonna go to the armor zone. That doesn't. That's not even a word. It's not even a I- thing. Yeah, it is. No, it's not. It's a, it's a zone where you keep armor. Jackass. No, no. Yes, that, that, that makes as much sense as die set down. Well, that makes set. Well, that also makes sense. Does it? You, you set something down and then you die. It's it's co- completely coherent. You're fucking lying. <laughs> AJ, All of this have, is a lie. When have when have I ever lied? Name one time I've ever lied. I was going to quote that one scene from Rugrats, but that was that one scene you said Spike was my brother. <laughs> uh, that's that would be that would be a very uh, deep cut from you. Uh, I mean, would that be a surprise? I've, I mean, I've, I've, I've done deep, I've done deeper cuts. If it wasn't Rugrats, I think it would have been, wouldn't have been a surprise. To be fair, well, no, I was going to well. Hmm. I'm trying to see if I, how I could en- how I could enter a Chris Chan joke there, but then again, he's already entered his mom enough. Oh, um, fuck off! <laughs> <laughs> woo, woo. Great but, way uh, to date this episode, huh? Uh, this is now part of history, Jay. Chris, we are the yeah. only we are the 
only tokusatsu podcast that has made a joke about Chris fucking his mother. I guarantee you that's true. I, uh, I guess it, it depends. I guess it depends on how quickly you get the episode out from recording, because that's uh, this is, that's still hot when we're doing this here. This is supposed to come out on the sixth of August. Well, uh, so uh, hopefully we beat um, fucking what other fucking podcasts are there that talk about this shit? Uh, uh, Cash Ranger, <laughs> fucking uh, the Toku Ladies podcast, Low Test Ranger. Load. <laughs> uh, uh, the 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 I I'm not soybean even... writer. <laughs> Reddit Sentai. Yeah. <laughs> Upvote Ranger. Wait, Reddit Sentai isn't that just Gokaiger? Oh Ooh! shit! Oh oh oh! oh. You oh. have made some enemies with that one. Uh. You've made enemies with that joke. Holy <laughs> shit. I'm not responsible hey, for I, this. I like Gokaiju. That's why I can make that joke. Uh, uh, I have a black friend. That's why I can say that word. I mean, listen, AJ. Oh, my God. Listen. No, no. I can drop the F word anytime I want. You well, know I that. can, too. Yes, you can. We both can. We all can. That's the nuclear option, all right? <laughs> Don't test me. Is it the nuclear option, though? Is I it mean, a nuclear it, option if you're actually gay? Uh, not really, I guess. <laughs> like it, it wouldn't be like it wouldn't be like Phil saying it. I mean, yeah, okay, okay, yeah. If if Phil said it, if Phil said it, that would be the nuclear option. Well, well no, you know what? People I mean, well, okay, no. There's so many Phil, people. Who, there's so many people <laughs> that think he's gay anyways. I was just matter. about to say, yeah. If he, people already think he's gay. He might as well. You know, what, he gets a pass because he, everybody already thinks he is. <laughs> you're so he's, homosexual. You might as well. Phil, Phil is like hard gay. Everybody just assumes he's gay because of the way he, he because of his character, and he's not actually gay. <laughs> is he gay or European? Uh, oh, my God. Um, yeah, uh, I guess that's it. Uh, we're um, after Saber. We'll be back with Amazons. Uh, I don't know if we'll even actually be able to survive Saber, but there you go. Man, now I have to fucking watch Saber. Shit. Oh, you uh, do? Because uh, what episode are we on? Actually, uh, just to fuck with you, let's 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 see what is what episode is Common Rider Saber on. Let us see <laughs> Common Rider Saber. What what episode are we on here? Uh, da, 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 da. We are on episode. Oh, this is going to hurt because it just keeps going. We are on episode... Wait, only 43? That doesn't seem right. Ugh. That doesn't seem right. What? That's still too many. Hold on, i got to check this now. Uh, What's July 11th? Oh, that's right! That's right, that's right, that's right! I forgot. We're, we were... Uh, there was no episode... The this week because of uh, Olympics, Olympics, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, well, I mean, hey, now you you only have forty three episodes to catch up on, Jay. Yay! Hope you have fun, asshole. Uh, you, you deserve this. Why do I deserve this? I don't know. You put Amazon's on the list. No, I didn't. <laughs> I would have I would have said you did. Fine, I didn't you, do it though. <laughs> fine, fine. You're the one who put an ninja on the list. Why the hell would I ever do that to myself? What? Do Actually, I... what was even next to Amazon? Let me see. Uh... I mean, listen, listen, AJ. I put Devilman on the list, and I learned my lesson about putting bad stuff on the list because we always pick it immediately. So you know what? I don't put anything on the fucking list anymore. I just I've stopped. I've learned my lesson. So right why would I do Amazon... that to myself? Oh my god, right next to Amazon was the other Ryuga series. Ugh. And then right and then the other one was Power Rangers Ninja and Super Ninja Steel. Oh. We were gonna lose on that one, dude. That was, <laughs> we we dodged a bullet. Ugh. Well we'll see. We'll see if we did when we come back to you on whenever the fuck <sighs> Saber ends, cause let's say uh Well, uh we know. I th- 
think that's going to be August 28th. Okay, so we'll be back here with the end of Saber, because we're going to do it the day it ends, probably. Maybe. We'll be if back here with the end of Saber. Oh, well, maybe. Well, we'll be back here with the end of Saber on the August 28th episode. That's going to be the only time we're going to probably skip a Friday. And then mm. from there, we'll just keep, we'll just come back after that with Saber. And then after that, we'll do Amazons and, uh, whoa, 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 whoa. fuck whoa. it. Do it live. <laughs> All right. Mm. Uh, that's it. That's the end of the episode. Don't look up Christian for the next couple of days. Bye. <laughs> just stay off the internet for the next couple of days.